guys, Ralph here. A little bit different today. Uh, let's get going. Power Trumpet Fitness, and we are going to talk about the golden age of trumpet, or what I consider to be the golden age of trumpet. Um, it's a little bit limited, there's no question about it. I'm going to use my personal experience on the uh, subject. As you know, I've mentioned many times I'm into my 60s here, and uh, it is going to date, date, date back to my time when I just got in New York, uh, late 60s into the early 70s. Okay, I'm going to do it in two different uh, parts. Part one is going to be orchestral. Part two is going to be commercial. Uh, I'm going to lay off the jazz and chamber music and all that sort of stuff. I think jazz specifically is all well documented. You know, what, what do you need me to tell you about Dizzy and Miles and, you know, you know, Randy Brecker and up to Whitman and, you know, right? You don't need that. Uh, the inner workings, a little bit of the orchestral scene and the commercial scene that I was lucky to be a part of, I think is a little different and you might find it interesting. So anyway, this is going to be the orchestral. I'm going to try to keep it in about eight, nine minutes of each one. I'm not going to turn it into a documentary. But once again, the orchestral scene, uh, circa 1970. Okay? That is when I moved to New York uh, to study with the great William Bacchiano. He was just finishing up as 36 years of the principal trumpet with the New York Philharmonic, and he was... Uh, retiring. And he is sort of, uh, for you young guys, and uh, it seems like everybody's younger than me nowadays, <laughs> but uh, you young guys, um, if you don't know about William Vacchiano, and there's not a lot of recordings out there from back then on YouTube and all that sort of stuff, uh, you're missing something. You really are, because he was probably more than the definitive or a principal orchestra player at the time, he was absolutely 100% the best teacher at the time. And you'll see how that affects everything I'm about to say, uh, and obviously the perspective I'm taking on these great trumpet players. Now, at the time, he uh, was playing principal trumpet, and John Ware was playing a sensible trumpet, and Jimmy Smith was playing third. And you talk about... <laughs> great trumpet section. I mean, it, it's one for the ages. And just prior to that was a little before my time there, but I certainly heard enough about him. And Vacchiano certainly talked about him so much. Nathan Prager was the assistant principal, and Johnny and Jimmy Smith moved over chair. Okay. Um, and again, just an absolute legendary trumpet section. Uh, only eclipsed for, by my way of thinking by Hearsteth, Cataract, that whole thing that was going on in Chicago. Um, it's real close. Uh, you may not agree with me, but though the, it's very, very close. And I think Hearsteth is the one that tips the scales. Uh, I think he was a slight bit better than Bacchiano and Johnny and Nathan Prager. A little bit. His chops were better. Okay. Not that certainly Bacchiano and them couldn't play the parts. Of course they could. They nailed the parts. But um, to hear her Seth play was a little, little notch above. Um, so anyway, that was that going into New York. Uh, when uh, Johnny Ware retired, now Johnny Ware came in and uh, took Vacchiano's chair. He uh, uh, split it up with Gerard Schwartz for a while. 
Uh, Gerard Schwartz did not last long. He got into conducting and did not last long. He was more of a chamber music guy anyway. Orchestra was not his cup of tea. Uh, and after Gerard Schwartz left, after a couple years, I don't believe he got tenure. I'm not sure. Uh, Phil Smith came in and just nailed it. Co-principals with he and Johnny and uh, for years. And he just recently retired. And I'll get to that. I think he was the last one of a, of a great, great lineage, if, if you will. Now, that was what was going on in New York. Now, we also had the Met and Mel Broyles and a cast of characters that were with him. And all you have to know about is Mel Broyles. I mean, one of the greatest. So you, you've seen my videos. And Vacchiano, John Ware, Nathan Prager, Mel Broyles. I mean, it's none, none better than that. None better than that going on at that time. Okay? Chicago, you had the Herseth Cataramic thing, which was just a monster a monster uh, uh, section. Uh, in Boston, you had the Gatala slash Charlie Schluter thing that came in after Gatala. Um, I'm not sure if their careers dovetailed a little bit. The end of Gatala's was the first. I'm not sure if that was the case or it was a clean break. But again, both Vacchiano students. Broyles was a Vacchiano student. I wouldn't say Herseth was a Vacchiano student per se, but he did study with him. A little bit. Um, Chicago. Uh, L.A., Tom Steven, a Vacchiano student. Um, Philadelphia, Catarabic, left the Chicago Symphony and went down and um, played in, uh, I mean, Philadelphia. I mean, just a bull, an absolute bull. Catarabic, now I'm talking. Uh, one of the all-time great. And listen to what I said. Listen to those names. Those are all-time great names. All-time great names. Um, it just doesn't get any better than that. And that's why I call it the golden age. And please, not to take anything away from the guys that are out there today. Not to take anything away from the guys that are out there today. I'm, it's, it's a different style. It's more of a soloist kind of... Um, reserved type style. They didn't have, they don't have the power that those guys have from my way of thinking today. Um, and again, I think Phil Smith, who was also a Vakiana student, was the last one of a great, um, great uh, group. Uh, the best one today for my money is George Vosberg, who is a little older than the new guys. And you could put, I believe he studied with Herseth, and you could probably put him with Phil Smith as the last one of that group. And I think he is head and shoulders better than anybody today. And that's nothing to take nothing away from the players today. It is a different style. It's a different approach. And um, that's that. But the absolute golden age of orchestral trumpet playing, every single seat was a superstar. Not just pretty good. I mean, an all-time great. If there was a Hall of Fame for trumpets, if there was, every single person I named, every single person would be a first ballot Hall of Famer. It's just, now, the kids today, God bless them. I'm not taking anything away from them. In fact, their careers aren't done yet. So there's a body of work that we haven't even heard yet. So, um, I mean, that, that's to be said. But for my money, because of uh, my money, they're, they're, they're not as good. They're not as good. Um, that's my take on it. I'm sure you have some thoughts on it. Give me a comment and criticism down below. You can contact me on email if you want to talk to me that way. But, um, yeah, the golden age of trumpet. The next one tomorrow will be uh, commercial. Commercial. And that's, uh, we talk about Bernie Glow and John Frost. <laughs> just just names that are, are scary. Okay, um, that's that. So, it ran a little longer than my five minutes, but uh, so be it. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoy it, and uh, yeah, eat your fruits and vegetables, do your kettlebells, and play your double Cs. Love you all. Bye-bye.